guys, happy new year. And I've already had a video go live this year. I actually filmed it at the end of last year. So this is the first video I filmed in the new year. So happy new year. I've got loads of flyaways because I didn't tame it with any hairdryer. So today I've got a couple of new bits that I want to try. This morning, the Benefit Cosmetics Professional Hydrating Primer launched. So this arrived in the post. So I'm going to use that today. And I've also got, which I've promised a couple of you, the Tarte Beauty textured neutrals volume one palette which i want to use if you've not seen it this is it it is beautiful oh my god it's incredible i'm so excited to try it i've not even swatched it so i'm gonna get straight onto it you know that there is the original there is the pearl version and this is the hydrating one it is very similar in texture this one contains hyaluronic acid it's a little bit more fluid than the original and it smells a bit fresher as well. So this is going to obviously fill in those tiny little pores on the skin, especially around this area that look like orange peel. Now, because this does contain hyaluronic acid, it can draw in moisture up to a thousand times its weight. So it's going to really hydrate the skin throughout the day, but it's also going to keep your makeup in place and just make sure that those kind of tiny little orange peel pore marks that we have around here look less visible. This also contains shea butter, which is really good for moisturizing and smoothing the skin. It definitely feels softer and more hydrating than the original. The original definitely feels a bit more silicone-y. This doesn't feel like that. It's, this one's really, really cooling actually. It's got a really nice cool feel to it. And I do like that smell. It's quite refreshing. This size is 22 mil, 0.75 fluid ounces. So online I can see it's around $32. 29 pound you can get it a little bit cheaper 28 pound will look fantastic and you can get a small version for 12 pound so i will link those down below for you if you want to try them for foundation i'm going to use the same as last week this one is the natasha denona x plus foundation which is the radiant full coverage foundation if you missed last week's tutorial where i talk a lot more in depth about this foundation i will link it on screen for you now so as some of you will know if you follow me on instagram i was actually in hospital over christmas um, not actually Christmas Day, it was the day after. Um, I had a severe water infection, which caused me to have a high temperature and a fever, which then caused me to go a little bit delusional. I don't remember getting to the hospital, I don't remember anything. Then I was treated for meningitis, even though I actually didn't end up having meningitis, but it was quite a scary situation. I was in a room on my own where everyone had to wear masks and it was a really scary experience. Long story short, I'm good, I'm home, I'm better, I'm feeling more myself. That's why I didn't film. I uploaded a story to Instagram just to apologize that there wasn't gonna be an upload that week. So that's why this is the first filming of 2020 for me. The tutorial that I uploaded last week was actually supposed to go up for New Year's Eve, but obviously I missed it. And I was in hospital on New Year's Eve and I was told that I was gonna to have to spend a few more days in, which was really upsetting, because no one wants to be in hospital on New Year's Eve, but thankfully, the doctor let me go home. So I'm back to feeling more myself. I hope you all had a really lovely Christmas. I've been busy myself with wedding planning. I'm so excited. I'm not getting married till next year, but I am in full swing of planning. So I'm gonna leave that to settle on the skin. It will be a little bit shiny for a little while while it settles. Um, I'm gonna get on with the eye makeup and then I will come back and finish off talking to camera to finish off my face. So I'm gonna do my brows off camera with my MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint, which I've done many, many times before and I will link on screen for you. So this is the Tarte Beauty Textured Neutrals Volume 1 palette. And the first shade I'm gonna use as my transition shade is Souf Matte, which is a nice camel color. And the brush I'm using to buff that into the socket line is my MAC 286S Duo Fiber Tapered Brush. So this is tapered at the tip, which means it just slots right into the socket of your eye easily, which means it does all the work for you. The first thing I've noticed about these eyeshadows is that they are very pigmented, so a little does go a long way and they really are very creamy. There's no patchiness, they're very easy to blend and as you can see there's no chalky finish. As with any transition shade, it's really key to build it up slowly and in light washes so that you don't overwhelm the eyelid with too much colour. This is where people tend to go wrong and end up with a muddy finish at the end. The key is to tap off all the excess product off of your brush first, then apply light washes and then build up that colour slowly. Here I've got about three layers on my eyelid and it's still relatively light but it is there and it's been sandwiched so it's going to last. So I've taken that through the socket and underneath those lower eyelashes. 
Going back to the palette, I'm now taking Ritual Matte, which is a rich chocolate shade, and I'm using the same brush, and again using a very light wash of this, and I'm buffing that on the outer third of the mobile eyelid and into the socket line. So if you divide up that mobile lid, which is the lash line up to where the eye naturally creases, divide that into three and make sure you apply this to the outer third. See how we've got that really beautiful smooth finish? It's because I'm using a very light hand when I'm buffing over the colour and I've not applied any more of the Ritual Matte Shade. I'm still using that same one wash of colour. And using what's left on the bristles to take that underneath those lower eyelashes before going in with a clean blending brush and just buffing over the seams to make sure that everything is completely smooth. I'm going back to the palette and I'm now taking Ritual Metallic. I'm going to apply some metallics before I apply glitters because I just want to show you how incredible they are. These are so smooth, there's no chunkiness to them, there's barely any fall down and the payoff is just, well it speaks for itself. They are completely opaque, you just can't see through them. They have incredible payoff. I'm sure they are equally as good with a brush but I always use metallic shades with my fingers just because they go on better. Then I'm going into Soothe Metallic which I'm going to apply to the inner half of the mobile lid and this is a slightly warmer champagne gold compared to the chocolate bronze shimmer on the outer half. Then sticking with the champagne shades I'm going in with Aura Metallic which is a champagne shimmer and as you can see it's a lot lighter so we're going to apply this on the inner corner of the eyes to add a beautiful highlight. I'm using a slight swiping motion to apply the colour and then a tapping motion between the shades just to create a beautiful ombre appearance so they look seamless from the lightest shade to the deepest shade. Don't forget to run what's left on your fingers underneath your lower eyelashes across the tear duct area. Next I'm going back to the palette and I'm taking Memory Matte which is a carbon black and I'm using a tiny tiny amount of this to smoke out the outer third of the mobile lid but really keeping it to that outer edge. You can wing it out, I'm just keeping it a bit more of a C shape and concentrating a little bit of that colour towards the lash line before going in with my MAC 286S tapered brush to buff over the entire lot and make sure it just looks very seamless and softly blown out. Going in with a small smudger brush, I'm dipping that into a very small amount of Memory Matte and also Rituals Matte and I'm taking that close to the eyelash line. This is going to define the root of the eyelashes and then I'm going in with a little bit more of the Rituals Matte and pulling the colour downwards to smoke it out. I'm going to line my waterline with Bobbi Brown's Longwear Gel Eyeliner in Sepia Ink. If you want more of a daytime look, a little bit less of a smoky finish, you can apply a cream cold pencil to the eye that will make it look wider and more awake. I want something a little bit softer and smoky and a bit more romantic so I'm going in with the brown. I'm using the tip of the brush to work that between the root of the eyelashes so that there's no kind of skin colour in between. I'm showing you this next step as an optional extra that you can do if you don't want to go in with glitters. I'm taking my brush and dipping it into a tiny bit of water and mixing that with the Memory Matte Carbon Black and using that as an eyeliner. So you could leave it here, apply some mascara and eyelashes and be done, but I'm going to show you a more amped up version for the evening. So I'm going in with some Soothe Glitter, which is a multi-dimensional champagne gold. And using my ring finger, I'm applying this to the mobile lid in a soft patting motion. Using a soft patting motion with a slight swiping technique is going to cause the glitter to lay flat and that's going to give you more of a almost chrome finish because it lays flat and it really reflects the light. It's the same as when we're doing nails, if we apply glitter and we just pat it on and then seal it you get more of a chunky kind of textured finish whereas if you swipe it and almost burnish it onto the nail you get more of a metallic chrome finish. Because it has that cushiony base with cosmetic glitter and it's mixed in with coconut oil and a gel, you've got something for it to kind of smooth into and it's super soft, there's no gritty feel to it. None of it got into my eye and there was barely any fall down compared to using ordinary cosmetic glitter. Now I've applied that over the majority of the lid, on the outer third I'm going to take Ritual Glitter which is a multi-dimensional warm bronze shade and again I'm using a patting swiping motion to get that beautiful finish but it's also going to create a nice ombre effect. To help get rid of some of the glitter that has fallen down I'm taking some scotch tape and removing the majority of the sticky off on the back of my hand and then gently dabbing that onto the glitter to pick up any loose particles. 
For mascara, I'm using the Bad Girl Bang. I forgot how much I love this mascara. If you didn't see my review, go check it out. It really is an incredible mascara. Even if you don't think that you're gonna like it and you've tried it once, I promise you, try it again, it's incredible. And then to top the mascara off, I'm using these Dreamy Lashes by Anastasia Beverly Hills. So moving back into the skin, I'm gonna use the MAC Studio Water Weight Concealer. This one is in NC25. And I'm gonna use this to brighten underneath the eyes. It isn't gonna to be too bright, like one shade. I really like that this concealer is so lightweight and a little bit goes a really long way. It's kind of good for all skin types, but particularly really good for mature skin, um, drier skin types. And I'm oily and I really love it. I just love that it's kind of undetectable on the skin. I'm gonna take a small amount of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish, press that onto the center of the face to set that in place. It also mattifies the skin and adds a tiny amount of coverage. And then if you do have any tiny flecks of glitter, you can just knock them off with the powder. To add a little bit of warmth to the cheekbones and the hairline, I'm gonna take NARS Laguna Bronzer. And I'm using the which is the same brush I always use, which is the Zoeva 127 Luxe Cheek Brush. These brushes are, I would say, very affordable for the quality that you get. Really high quality brushes, really lovely bristles and affordable. I used to love this bronzer. I used to use it all the time. I just find now though that I am definitely a firm fan of the Bare Minerals one. I'm particularly using something different today because I always use the Faux Tan Endless Summer one. This one I find now to be a little bit too warm, whereas the Faux Tan one is a tiny bit cooler, which just tends to suit me a little bit more. The Endless Summer bronzer one, you can kind of use as a contour and bronzer because it's just on the cooler side slightly, so you can use it a little bit to contour. For blush, it's no surprise, I'm gonna use the Nudies by Nude Sticks. I actually have the new one, Salty Siren, which is gorgeous. This is a matte one and it is in coral, which I absolutely adore. I keep using it since I've got it. However, I think I'm gonna go with Sweet Peach Peony because it's just a bit softer in color. So I'm gonna use a fluffy brush, and just dip that into the very top of the Nude Sticks. And I'm gonna keep this quite high on the cheek today. So just stipple it backwards and forwards. And this is a dewy finish to it, so you kind of don't need to add any highlighter to it, especially powder, because it does have a dewy finish to it. So if you add powder over the top, it's kind of just gonna stick. It's a nice combination between the color that I'm wearing and the brown on my eyes. Just do the same on this side. So apply the majority of the color in one spot first. Just dab it backwards and forwards and then using what's left on the bristles, bring the colour down slightly so it just blends into the bronzer that we've got on the cheeks. And we're using a stipple motion to apply it so it's soft. And then use what's left on the bristles to taper the colour upwards into the highlight area so it doesn't look like a stark stripe on your cheek. And then use what's left of the bristles to bring it down to the apple of the cheek absolute favourite of last year. I'm going to be boring and apply the same onto my lips. This is so fresh, they're easy to apply, you can just use your fingers and because they're slightly dewy you get a hydrated finish. If you're someone who can't live without lip liner, by all means go in with some lip liner. I'm quite a fan of just tap and go. So I just put a curling wand through my hair just to zhuzh it up a little bit. One of my favorite things to use at the minute on my hair is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo. This smells so fresh. This actually cleans your hair. Like, it, even though my hair is freshly washed yesterday, um, whenever I use a curling wand through it, I just don't like the smell of the heat. So I like to go in and just give my hair a little freshen up. And you get it in different sizes, so you can keep a small one, sorry, around in your bag, or you can just keep a big one in your cupboard. It makes your hair feel really fresh, 
you get a tiny white residue but if you just leave it for 30 seconds to kind of absorb all the oil and then I usually if I've got a hairdryer on hand will blast it with a hairdryer because it kind of just blasts it all throughout your hair and it just gives it a bit of life and it just looks lovely um, if you don't just wait a couple of seconds and then just use your fingers and just use it in and it would just revitalize your hair making it smell really nice and yeah this is my new favorite live in proof and that completes my tutorial using the new tati beauty textured neutrals palette i love it i think it's beautiful she's done an incredible job and do you know what's really really refreshing is that it is a palette that does contain some more neutral looking shades even though it is you know overall a neutral palette some of the Huda Beauty ones that are incredible, they just all seem to be so warm. But Tati's just got it perfect. I'm so happy for her. She's done an incredible job. And as a professional makeup artist, I would put this in my kit. I love it. I think it's brilliant. The texture of the glitters is insane. Very impressed. And I did buy the palette myself. There has been no gifting. I did the same with Lisa Eldridge with her lipsticks. I thought they were gonna be absolutely incredible and I wasn't disappointed. Worth every single penny. And it's the same with the eyeshadow palette from Tarte. It is incredible. And if you've not tried it, then I definitely would encourage that you do. I will list and link everything I've used below. If Tarte's palette isn't in stock, it will be in stock soon. If you'd like to see more looks with the palette, let me know in the comment section below. And if you've got any other suggestions, also leave those in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me outside of YouTube on my social handles, which will be on screen for you now. And if you missed last week's tutorial, go check it out. Loads of you have gone and watched it so far. I'm really, really pleased that you guys are loving it. It was a good one. It was a nice one to film bronzy and glowy. Thank you for all your well wishes on Instagram. I am feeling much better, so you'll be pleased to know I'm back to filming on a regular basis. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.